Good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. Michael's on um, Mothering Sunday. I hope you've all had your daffodils, chocolates, tea in bed, and so on. And we start in prayer. Prepare us, O God, as we gather for worship in your name. Give us grace to serve you with reverence, joy, and thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we start with the first hymn, Angel Voices Ever Singing. <laughs> Sunday service books. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank you. But today is a time to celebrate our mother churches and those people and places which have nurtured our faith. But for many, this time of Mothering Sunday comes with some painful associations with motherhood or feelings of inadequacy or loss. Yet, in Christ, we are given both comfort and family. So we've come together today to give thanks to God for all those people who have nurtured us and to offer ourselves to nurture others with God's help. We have come also to acknowledge the pain of a hurting world where we have failed to nurture each other. We come to receive again from the God of compassion and mercy. So we turn to the next page and pray together the prayer of preparation. Loving, compassionate Father, as a mother hen gathers her chicks, so you draw the whole human family to yourself. Bring us together now, Lord, that we may today and forever be united under your wing in all our sorrows and joys. Amen. So we come to our prayers of penitence. Let us call to mind our sin, our failure to value the love of others, and our failure to love as Christ has loved us. Your love gives us life from the moment of conception. We fail to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good. We seek our own good. 
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help. We ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore in you his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us hear the collect prayer for Mothering Sunday. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So please sit as we hear our Old Testament reading. reading is taken from Exodus, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that it was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse for the Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said yes. So the child, the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. And be to God. We now stand to sing our second hymn, Mother in God. You gave me birth. Eternal glory. 
hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please sit. The giving and withholding of names is an important and intriguing element in both of today's Bible readings. These readings are fascinating not only for what they tell us, but also for what they keep hidden. Our first reading from the book of Exodus tells us the story of the beginning of the life of Moses, one of the greatest leaders of God's people. Only this turns out to be a very precarious beginning for young Moses, in order that his life might be saved after Pharaoh's order to kill all male Hebrew children. And so Moses' mother hides him among the plants growing at the river's edge. Moses' mother is taking a great risk in disobeying the orders of the Pharaoh. Imagine the thoughts crowding her mind, the emotions welling up in her heart as she carries out her plan but she is acting instinctively as a mother, with a courage born out of the fierce love which lies at the centre of what it means to be a mother. The story then twists and turns when the baby is found by the daughter of the Pharaoh. She also disobeys her father's command and sees that the child is cared for. Thus, Moses' mother is given back her child for a time, only to lose him for good several years later when she takes him into Pharaoh's household. And so yet again, the pain of motherhood is felt in the story. Having let go of her child once already, Moses' mother has to give him, has to give him up once more. It's at this point that we suddenly become aware of the importance of names in this story. Throughout this tale, we're not told the name of Moses' father, nor his mother, nor his sister, though they are given some traditional names that are not mentioned in the text. The only individual given a name in the story is Moses himself. In the Jewish books of the law, the Torah, it's the parents who give a child its name. Sometimes in very special circumstances, an individual may receive their name from God himself, such as when Abraham and Sarai are renamed Abraham and Sarah. But it's truly strange that Moses received his name not from his father or mother, but from the daughter of the Pharaoh. What's more, the root of the name Moses is the Egyptian word Messes, which means child, as in the name Ramesses, meaning child of Ra. The name given to Moses, the hero of the Exodus, the greatest of the Old Testament prophets, is given by his adoptive mother, a foreign princess, in a foreign language. 
perhaps it's a result of the princess's compassion and courage that even God calls Moses by this name from this point onwards. Our Gospel reading takes us to the foot of the cross of Jesus. As he so often does in his Gospel, St John presents this event in his own unique way, and very differently to the way in which Mark, Luke and Matthew do so. Those first three Gospel writers depict the crucifixion as a time of humiliation and defeat for Jesus. For John, however, although it's still a point of extreme agony and suffering, the cross is the place of Jesus' exaltation and glory. It is the hour of Jesus' greatest triumph and the ultimate manifestation of God's love for the whole of creation. That's how John sees it. In human terms, the hour of the cross which John shows us is also a time of great emotion. Here, alongside several other followers, the mother of Jesus watches her son die, brutally, unjustly, painfully. It's hard to imagine the overwhelming sadness that she felt as she watched her firstborn child die at the hands of people who misunderstood and betrayed him. Of course, like the mother of Moses, Mary's presence here is simply the natural response of a mother. Jesus might have been dying a criminal's death, but he was Mary's son. In Mary's presence at the cross, we see the strength and the deep love of a parent for her child. There's something profoundly moving in the fact that in the agony of the cross, Jesus thought of the loneliness that his mother would face in the days ahead. And even then, he never forgot the duties that were his as her eldest child. We then come to two things that Jesus said, which can be interpreted in different ways, again, as is John's custom. Jesus spoke to Mary, saying, Woman, here is your son. Perhaps he's referring to himself and asking her to witness the sacrifice that he's making on the cross. If so, Mary may have recalled the promises she received decades ago in the temple when Simeon told her that she would experience sorrow like a sword piercing her heart. However, Mary's not standing there alone. By her side is the disciple Jesus loved. So perhaps when Jesus says to Mary, here is your son, he is referring to this disciple and is inviting Mary to take him into her home and her family and to be a mother to him. Similarly, Jesus says to his disciple, here is your mother. Perhaps Jesus is referring to himself who has cared for his disciples like a mother. Or perhaps, and perhaps more likely, he has given the disciple to Mary, a new mother who will care for him once Jesus is no longer with him. A bit like in the story of Moses, what is so very intriguing in this poignant moment is that John doesn't refer to the mother of Jesus by name. Although he gives names to the others who are standing with her, John doesn't give her the name Mary. In fact, John never refers to the mother of Jesus as Mary throughout the entire Gospel. Is this not strange, especially as Matthew, Mark and Luke all clearly state that the mother of Jesus is called Mary? Well, perhaps, and perhaps not. It seems that John, yet again, might have another deeper purpose in mind. Perhaps what John intends is that at this crucial moment of the earthly life of Jesus, Mary becomes the mother of all people. Your mother, my mother, the universal mother. By not naming Mary here, John opens the mother nature of Mary to all those who look on Jesus and seek a hope a place in which to find the love 
and care they seek. In this heartbreaking moment, we see something life-giving and affirming. A small group of people in the midst of one of the most difficult times of their lives, watching, waiting, being present with one another, and seeking to give each other hope and a new way into the future. For you and me too, that way is open through the deep, sweet, motherly love of Jesus, which holds, nurtures, and brings new life. Amen. Let us now stand to affirm our faith in God together. And so let us affirm our faith in God as we say, We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit for our prayers of intercession. To the words, God of love, let us respond together by saying, hear our prayer. So we bring to God, who is both father and mother, our prayers on this Mothering Sunday. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you that you have comforted us as your children. You have led your people with cords of kindness and bonds of love. You have provided many good things for us and met our needs. Thank you today for being like a mother to us. God of love. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you today for the women who you have brought into our lives who have cared for us. For mothers and carers of every type. For sisters, aunties, grandmothers, and any other women who have helped to raise us. Where we miss them, may you comfort us. As we pray for each other, we recognise that sometimes mothers are not perfect like you. Where we hurt, please restore us. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are part of caring for children in all sorts of ways. For teachers and others in education, for social workers and support workers, youth and children's leaders, nurses, doctors, therapists, and all those in health care. Nurture in them the fruit of your spirit, and equip them for the work you have set before them.
God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for children who are currently not with the mother figure or parents they need, or who are facing uncertainty and instability. Think of the children who have lost parents through war, and that they may be given to good people who will care for them. Please pour out upon them your love, comfort, security, and peace. God of love, Amen. hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are in need, those for whom we wish peace and health and goodness. We remember especially today, Barry Holloway, Eileen Gilbert, Claire Holden, Claire, Alicia, and John Fellows. We remember also those who have died, remembering especially Peggy Phillips, and those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time including Robert Simpson, Vera Yarnold, Graham Burge, Dennis North, and Dorothy Frost. God of love, hear our prayer. And finally, we pray that you will help us to follow the model of motherly love which we see in your care for all your people. May we reflect that goodness into the lives of all we meet this day. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And to share Christ's peace to Through the prophet Isaiah, God says, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ. And in a moment we'll sing our offertory hit number three, Sing We of the Blessed Mother.
continue now in the center pages of our author of song. <coughs> Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. Spirit Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Trusting in the compassion of God, 
let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. God, as a mother feeds her children at the breast, you feed us in this sacrament the food and drink of eternal life. Help us who have tasted your goodness to grow in grace within the household of faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we now sing our final hymn of the four. Listen, let your heart be keen see.
will hear uh, notices before the final part of our service. <coughs> So I just wanted to clarify something, which is that <coughs> Merrill is not standing as a warden. Now, most of you might think that means she finishes as of the AGM. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Officially, she remains a warden until the bishop has welcomed the new wardens in post but she will be winding down. So you'll be seeing less of her. We do have some volunteers who are going to uh, assist me, and she will be ensuring that they get uh, suitable instruction <laughs> as to what's needed. Um, alternatively, they can always ask me. But I just thought I'd let you sort of clarify that. So you might see a few changes um, the bishop's service is yet to be arranged, but probably sometime in May. So, um, you'll still have to obey her. <laughs> right. Um, first of April, so, um, Palm Crosses. Now, uh, these are, they're asking for volunteers to go and make them. Uh, for those of you that decide to go, you will be given suitable instruction. Please take some scissors with you. It's at the OBH and it'll be at 10 a.m. Uh, and that's the first of April is a Saturday. So don't be fooled by April Fool jokes. Right. Um, coronation booklets. Now they're producing some of these. Now the ones out on the table are samples only. They're not for the taking. But if you would like one of these, could you put your name down and also how many of these you would like? And then we'll get a bulk order and distribute them later. Expected price for these is one pound per book. So have a look, see if you'd like to get one and then put your name down. Right. Um, oh yes, don't forget. Now there is a commodity which a lot of you aren't using these days. It's called cash. So, um, feel free to take a Smarties tube and return it full of money. It'll take a 20p piece or a pan coin, up to you. It takes lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I think if you put pounds in them, it'll produce something like about 30 quid when it's full. So it's a sizable amount. And last but certainly not least, there is a young lady who's going to celebrate her 21st birthday. Hat Lions! <laughs> Looking good for 21. So, can we have some music please, my friend? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Thank you, Keith, very much indeed. Um, we have been having a conversation as well about um, reinstating the shaking of hands at the peace. Uh, we haven't come to a final decision about it yet, though we think 
it's probably for those who would want to do it okay to do that now. I know that across the parish, um, in various services, um, certain people and um, one or two of the clergy uh, are doing that. Um, I don't know, we may not be at a point right yet to say, okay, we'll definitely do it. And I know there may be some people who want to do it and others who aren't so sure, so we don't want to um, make anybody feel awkward. But um, if you've got any thoughts about that, have a word with me or Keith or, or Merrill, um, and we'll look to reinstating it unless there's um, pressure against doing so sometime in the next um, couple of weeks or so. So that would be really good. Thank you. No Mothering Sunday service is complete um, without giving a little token of our thanks, not only to mothers, but to all the ladies who are here in church today. So we're going to join in with the responses that you can see where it says prayer for mothers and distribution of flowers. Then we'll distribute them and then we'll say that final prayer afterwards. So please join me in these responses. For the care of mothers, thanks be to God. For their patience when tested, thanks be to God. For their love when tired, thanks be to God. For their hope, when despaired, thanks be, be to God. God. For their service without limit, thanks be, be to God. God. So now Meryl and Louise and Claire will bring round the flowers and uh, <coughs> making sure that every lady here has got a posy to take home with them. And there may be some left over at the end and people can come and take those. Perhaps we'll put them on the altar and people can take those afterwards. So <coughs> please do distribute those lovely poses. So let's pray together the prayer of thanks on that opposite page. Thank you God for the love of our mothers. Thank you, God, for their care and concern. Thank you, God, for the joys they have shared with us. Thank you, God, for the pains they have borne for us. Thank you, God, for all that they give us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So let's now stand to hear the words of God's blessing as our service comes to a close. May God, who gave birth to all creation, bless you. May God, who became incarnate by an earthly mother, bless you. May God, who broods as a mother over her children, bless you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.